Hey everybody, in today's World Walk Around, we are going to the past in France. And what we are going to look at is the precursor to the TGV. Now you don't even have to be that huge of a rail fan to know what the TGV is. It's France's high speed rail system. And it broke a lot of new ground when it first appeared. As wonderful as the TGV was, it didn't appear out of nowhere. There were precursors to it. And the precursor that I'm going to talk about today is the Le Capital the semi-high speed train that took passengers from Paris to the southern France city of Toulouse. So I really love it if you join me on this journey and we'll get to it in just a moment. Hang on. Today's episode is brought to you by Roll True Scale Models, specifically their 40 foot containers from their Iron line, which is designed to give you the most detail possible without breaking the bank. The containers are available in all of your favorite shipping lines and feature printing on all sides that is crisp and detailed, including the sides, the doors, and occasionally even the tops, if the container company normally has that. The containers include a removable bottom, just in case you want to add weight or even add cargo. It's up to you. And they have carefully placed and correctly sized pins and pin holes on the top for accurate stacking. These containers are also available at a lower price without livery for all of your diorama needs. Please see the link in my description for information on how to purchase and for a coupon that will give you 10% off. For anyone wondering, the train's name is not based on Paris, the capital of France. It's actually based on this building, the Le Capitole building in Toulouse, the destination of the train or I guess the starting point, depending on which way you're looking at it. It's pretty nice, I've never been there but photographs sure make it look very, very cool. Trains had been available from Paris to Toulouse starting in the late 1800s, so they weren't a new thing, but starting on November 15th, 1960, Le Capital was inaugurated with the BB9200 series of locomotives in this sort of nominal green SNCF livery. By the time Le Capitole was inaugurated, the trip time had been cut down from well, actually over 20 hours to about seven, and trip times were slowly reduced until they minned out around six hours and 30 minutes with this electrified line. Not too bad. Service wasn't super popular to start with. On Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, the train ran southbound, and on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, it ran in the reverse direction. So this service wasn't super popular to begin with, but the French National Railroad Company saw that this indeed could be a very popular service, particularly if they increased the speeds and turn it into a premium train ride. So around 1964, they began to prepare and modify these 9200 series, which were normally designed for 99 mile per hour service, into locomotives that could go up to 120 miles per hour. Eventually, they converted six of the 9200 series into the 9200 Capitole series and also modified a tranche of carriages in order to run at the increased speeds they expected the Le Capitole to achieve. To finish everything off, they painted everything in this brilliant red and white livery and then attached these large Capitole plates to the end of the 9200s and Le Capitole plates to each of the passenger cars as well creating a stunning and desirable train set that would attract riders and attract riders it did. Eventually a morning train and an evening train would run in each direction, making four trains per day for Le Capitole. It had really come a long way from its humble beginnings in 1960. Le Capitole was specifically designed to attract a high standard of clientele, particularly business people traveling between the two cities. And because of that, the consists were often set. The composition of the train was generally, although not always, started off with a combine car, which was a baggage and seven first class compartment car. The next couple of cars were nine compartment first class cars. After that, you generally had a dining slash restaurant coach and then up to five more nine compartment first class cars. So yes, 
This was a first class train set all the way. And from Paris to Toulouse, which is a 443 mile trip, it made it in six hours, which was an average of 74 miles per hour. Much better than the earlier 20 hour plus trip that averaged sometimes as little as 30 something miles per hour. Although the new Capitol wasn't that much faster than the old one, they had other plans for this train and those were going to bear fruit in the future. The 30 minute improvement was thanks to a technological improvement in a section of the track between Les Aubres, Orléans, and Virzon. This section of the track was important because it set up the future by allowing 200 kilometer plus per hour service, and it did so through the improvement of track, the improvement of at grade crossing so that cars would have a much lower chance of hitting the train, and through the installation of true positive train control. In essence, this section of the track was a test bed for the future to come, the future of French high-speed rail. In fact, this part of the video was filmed on that section of track, and if you wait here a second, you'll see that the speedometer has topped out at 200 kilometers per hour. So good for him, he's made it, and good for the French people for starting to build this infrastructure early. It really helped them in the future when they implemented the TGV. Interesting, this particular locomotive and train set as a whole, including this livery, only lasted for three years. It had a very short lifespan, and that's not because it wasn't popular. In fact, it became very popular. The issue was it actually almost became too popular, and it became part of the Trans-Europe Express route, and also it gained a new locomotive, one that was designed from the outset for 200 km per hour service, and also it gained new carriages that were also designed for semi-high speed service. So this truly was a test train and it lived long enough to do what its job was. Good job, Le Capital. If you want to model Le Capital, you're in a very good luck because a lot of companies have made this particular train set. It's famous and of course it's very stunning. So you have a lot of options ranging from almost ancient to very, very recent. You're in great luck. Believe me, a large part of me was tempted to buy the REE version. I, their models are beautiful. They are one of the premier manufacturers of models in the world. But what I decided to do instead was to purchase Roco 43563, which is their museum edition of BB9292. And it comes in this beautiful box. Maybe I was inspired by a Rapido's E8 Amtrak, but I thought this was just really beautiful. And frankly, um, these Rocos, even though they're from the past, this is from 1993, they're quite beautiful and they run very, very well. And they're often very DCCable. <laughs> it's not always true, but what I got was this very, very cool book. Uh, it's actually in three languages. It's in French, English, and German, and it's full of really nice pictures and a lot of great information about this train. This probably is what sold it. Well, maybe the box did as well, but it's just a wonderful book and I was about to go on a long airplane ride. So I figured I'd have a lot of time to read the book and it was pretty neat to fell asleep a couple times, but that's more because of the plane than because of the book. Also sold me was this enamel pin. Very, very nice. I like it a lot. I don't know if I ever wear it, but I certainly like it. I, the, one of the big problems with Roco, I guess, that I complain about is that you have to attach too many pieces and it looks like that's going to be the case here. Let's see if this has a DCC plug. It's 1993, so it's right on the cusp of DCC and it looks like it does not have a DCC plug. So we're going to have to work around that. Very nice manual here. Very cool. It gives you a little bit of information about this particular locomotive as well. And um, so I like that. And here's the thing itself. And as you can see, I think it's going to at least in some ways rival the REE models version. Probably not super duper good, but if I'm lucky, unlike REE, it'll actually have a driver in it. Oh, it does. There we go. So that's also a nice selling point for me. And frankly, I think it looks really nice. Okay, I can already tell looking under, it's gonna not give me some weird pancake motor or something like that, but doesn't have Le Capitole on the front of it, so I'm gonna to have to affix that, and I just pray that that is a self-adhesive 
So somebody is nice. They kept this. It looks like they just kept it in the box. Uh, some of the some of the insulators are missing, but hopefully they're still in the box. If not, maybe it'll just be one that's missing. All right, the consist. Part of the reason I got this is because Roco, even though they didn't reissue the locomotive, they did reissue the consist. And that's the eight car 74109 and 74110. And one of them will contain the combine car that you're gonna need for this. And if you remember, this can max out at nine cars. And one of them, I believe, will have the restaurant. So that's what we're gonna have. And we open this one and here we go. These are very, very nice. And I figured the other nice thing about getting the Roco is even though that these were several years apart, I figured that the paint would match pretty much spot on. These, this is a brand new set. This came out in the 2021 catalog, I think. And I got it really inexpensively. I have a good deal with um, the retailer who sells me this stuff. And oh yeah, we're gonna get to these. This is gonna be kind of awful. This is just Roco's weak spot. It's making you do a little bit too much work, I think. These are the Le Capitole uh, plates on the side and I'm going to have to grind those down. I'm not looking forward to that whatsoever. So a really nice set. And the problem is, is when I open this box, if you look, it really wasn't packaged very well. And the box that came with the, the version that came with the combine car and the restaurant car were kind of bashed up. Um, so I had to kind of film this for the sake of my retailer to show him that things got kind of messed up. And in fact, the combine car, this was generally unrepairable. It looks like it might be repairable, but the more I looked at it, the more I realized it was pretty smashed up. So it's funny, he's like, oh, I'll send you another one, don't worry about it. And he did, but what's funny is that box got messed up too. And I'm like, I know this isn't your fault. I'm sure you're not stomping on these, but do you have some sort of a beef with your postman or something like that? Probably the UPS guy, did you piss him off somehow? Piss her off? Either way, those ones came through fine. So and what's weird though is he sent me the only one he had left in stock was the one with just the carriages again, but it's no problem because the bottoms of the carriages will fit onto the shell of the ones that were broken. Okay, one thing I didn't like about this, and I often don't like about Roco, is you have to put on a lot of stuff, but these were a pain, these etched plates. They're brass plates, but they're etched, and so you have to like take off the paint on top of the raised portion of the Capitol. I really hated doing this. And you're wondering, why did I put it on the car first? I honestly felt I had the best purchase to be able to kind of scrape away the paint by gluing these on first. Um, I was really careful not to scratch up the car itself. And I, I didn't want to bend it beforehand, so that's what I did. Um, so yuck, I hated that. But then I had to go DC, see the locomotive and I wasn't sure what to expect. I knew it didn't have a plug. I could already tell from the instructions, but what was going to happen. And if there is one hindrance to doing a lot of these older locomotives, it's often that there's not enough space inside because they reserve a lot of space for the chassis or for weight. And so you have to do something, but let's go ahead and make sure this runs first. Beautiful, beautifully smooth. Roco is one of the best companies, particularly historically when it comes to how smooth their locomotives run. Very nice. So let's go ahead and pop this open and see how much room they're going to give us. And I just have a bad feeling that it's not going to be very much room. So it's a simple pry and pull and oof, I can, I, God, this is pretty nice. So I, oof, but I can already tell this is not going to give me a lot of love when it comes to finding space in here. I bet you that this circuit board nearly takes up all the space until the bottom of the top of the inside of the shell. I can just kind of tell. It's pretty nice. Looks like it did a pretty nice job. It'll be a relatively easy DCC conversion. So if you look, the light bulb is only on one side and it connects to the frame. That's where it's getting one side of its power from. And then the other side, I don't know if you noticed in the shell, but that's where um, the power for the other side of the slide is going to come from. But we're going to completely remove that. 
There we go. Let's see. Yeah. So if you can look, you can. You're gonna see how this this piece of brass in here, copper, whatever that is, touches on the top of the light, and that's how it's going to get the light. Now I can tell it's not gonna have a reverse light, and frankly, I don't know if the original had a red reversing light. But while they're in there, and again, I usually do this. Ooh. Oh, this is not going to have very much room at all. Uh, hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to have to do something about that, but I think part of it is going to be sacrificing this circuit board that's in here. I think I'm just going to have to let that go because I can tell there's just not going to be a ton of space. So let's go ahead and just bite the bullet. I'm not even going to try to use this because there's just really nothing here on this circuit board that helps me. And it looks like the circuit board is going to connect to one side of the motor and the frame is going to provide power to the other side of the motor. That looks like what we've got going on. So I'm going to have to deal with that. There's only a flywheel on one side though, and that's really good news. Very, very good news because that means I'm going to have room for the speaker on the other side. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and pull this thing off of here. Clip those out. We're just not going to need this anymore. So we're gonna have to make it for some of this ourselves. So let's see, that'll be really nice. We can just run the wires into the left and right and let's pop the motor out. It's got a screw in. Let's go ahead and pop the motor out of it. And okay, so what I'm gonna to have to do is one side, I don't know whether it's gonna be positive or negative, is going to be on the bottom side of this and I'm going to have to isolate it. Oh, it's a very smooth motor. So even though it's open frame, it looks like it's not going to have any problems being DC seed. So I'm going to have to solder directly onto that. And it looks like there's there's enough surface area. I'm a little bit scared that it's going to spread out the heat so much it'll melt this plastic here before I'm able to get a wire on it. But I, let's, let's just assume I'm okay. Okay. So I went in the other room and I'm okay. So all I did was tape isolated that and I've put a wire on it and I'm going to solder wire onto this other side and that will get the motor going. I don't know which side is which. I, I'll just tie them together and if it works backwards, I'll go ahead and just flip the wires and no problem there whatsoever. So there is what we have. And again, this is going to be very tight, very, very tight. I can, I can already tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the speaker on this side and you can see that there's a lot of room down in this valley for me to put a downward firing speaker into it so i'm really thankful for that i just got to make sure it doesn't get involved with all that mess right there but i don't think it'll be a problem and the other side is where the decoder is going to go i'm going to have to put in a little bit of a depression because you think the decoder is really thin but it's actually not as thin as you might think so i went ahead and made this uh, wooden platform for it for that and the speaker and I think that will give me a good opportunity to mount everything in there without any kind of interference particularly off of that flywheel and that's what happened here it is and it all worked out pretty well there is plenty of flywheel clearance and uh, I put the speaker downward firing on the other side so I think it'll work well and if you um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use SMD LEDs and even though I'm going to dip the SMD LEDs in glue, I'm also going to um, put some um, nail polish in here just to make sure I don't accidentally short them out. So I think that'll work pretty well. All right, it all fit in there. It all fit in there great. And I didn't put in a cab light. I decided just to forego that but I can put it in later if I want. So now I've got to assemble all this. Yeehaw. Not looking forward to that. And please, please have an adhesive backing. And I can kind of tell just by looking at this, it's not going to have, come on, come on. Be, be a piece of tape that goes on there. It's not a piece of tape. So I'm going to have to actually glue it on there. I think what I'll do is I'll use some E6000 glue and that way it really won't jack up the paint and it won't tear into the paint or the plastic. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, we'll assemble the rest of this stuff. Yeehaw, thanks Roko for out time for making me have to do all this work. Not a big fan of it. All right, it worked out great and it is a beautiful model and a beautiful train set. I absolutely love this. How can you not? Um, it was designed to be striking and stunning and I think it still is to this day.
thanks to that whole yeah, shipping, I guess, debacle, I actually have a train that's longer than the prototype would be. The max that this would be would be nine cars. I have 11. Do I really care? Nope, not at all. It looks pretty cool with 11 cars. And, you know, if something happens to one of them, I can always whittle it down to a nine car. So it gives me a little bit of headspace. So I certainly like that. But wow, what a great looking train. My wife says it kind of looks like a fire truck. I think it kind of looks like a, I guess, one of those older school buses or RVs from the 50s or something like that. But I, I really, really enjoy watching this going around the track. Very nice, and I'm glad I decided to go this way. I'm sure the REE would have been very cool, but there's something about resurrecting and using a model that's, goodness, what, almost 30 years old now, right? And it runs just fine. And I'm sure if it has a spirit, it's happy to be doing what it's supposed to be doing and was designed to do. I hope you enjoyed this short line history. I don't know if anyone in the audience that's watching has actually ridden on this thing. Um, this particular version, as I said, only lasted three years and they switched to a different locomotive and a different paint scheme because it became part of the Trans Europe Express line. So only three years people got to see this and ride on it. That's one of the things I like about being a historian. I like doing these short line histories because I get to look into these things a little bit and maybe this will help you out too. I noticed there wasn't a lot on English on YouTube on this train, so I hope this helped you. And if it did, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. Those things really help me out. I think there's like a new tip button or something if these kinds of things really, really help you out. But also I might be able to help you out and you can help me out at the same time. There are links to my sponsors, and if you purchase from one of the links, I definitely benefit, and I hope you will too, and I've given you a coupon that you might be able to find helpful. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. I'll give you a running session here in a second. I really had a great time filming this train. It's really mesmerized by the paint scheme, and I'm glad the DCC conversion went so well. So take care. Talk to you later. Happy model railroading. Stay safe out there. See you soon. Bye for now.